So you're Johnson & Johnson in the 1970s. You sell the world's most innocent helpful products to new parents. Baby powder. It smells nice. Try some. I mean, what could be wrong with baby powder? Soft, smooth powder that keeps babies dry, comfortable, and clean. And even better, Johnson & Johnson baby powder isn't just good for babies, it's also good for adults. What more could you ask for? By the early 70s, you've been making your signature baby powder for nearly 80 years, and it's become a staple to nearly every family in America. But then you run into an unexpected problem. You see, your researchers have just discovered something shocking. Something that might mean the end to your powerful, profitable baby powder monopoly. There's poison in the baby powder. Poison in the form of asbestos, a toxic mineral found in one of the ingredients, talc. Talc is what makes the powder so soft and smooth. And even though there's only a little bit of asbestos in each bottle of your baby powder, even small amounts can become incredibly dangerous over time. Asbestos is so bad for humans, it doesn't just make people sick, it can even lead to cancer. Now obviously, finding asbestos in your best-selling product geared towards infants is a major problem. But let's face it, without tact the ingredient that has asbestos, your baby powder would suck. It wouldn't have that signature Johnson & Johnson smoothness. And without your number one family-friendly product, your image as a family-friendly company would be destroyed. If you admitted your baby powder was toxic, no parent in their right mind would ever trust any of your other products again. You would have to lose a bunch of money and time to recalls, and you'll probably face some legal action. You would be done. So instead of saying something, instead of warning your loyal customers that they're poisoning their infants, you do nothing. You don't raise any alarms, you don't arrange for any more testing, you just shove the reports into the deepest, darkest corner you can find, and pray nothing ever comes out. But like most companies that keep secrets, the truth eventually comes back to haunt you. Only this time, the public's discovery of asbestos in your baby powder wouldn't just be another short-lived scandal. They knew about it. They knew there was asbestos in Johnson & Johnson baby powder. It would expose all your shittiest marketing tactics and lies and show the world just how evil America's most family-friendly company really is. May have known for decades Can't that it's baby imagine powder. the level of harm. My name is Jake Tran, and we make documentaries on money, power, war, and crime so that you can see the world for what it really is. A giant game of acquiring power. You can't get out of this game either way, so instead of being a victim, why not learn to be a better player? Your parents, teachers, friends, society would never teach you any of this, so we're going to. And this is Johnson & Johnson, America's evilest family company. Smart crypto investors are buying the dip right now. But if you do the same, you want to make sure you don't waste a ton of money on super high transaction fees. And luckily, that is where Binance comes in. Binance is the largest crypto exchange in the world by daily trading volume, and now you get to trade Bitcoin on Binance for free. That's right, there are now zero fees when it comes to buying or selling Bitcoin on Binance, which is a game changer. And on top of that, they've always had some of the lowest transaction fees around. With Binance, you can trade 600 different cryptos anywhere, anytime, and 90 million users are already taking advantage of it. If you've always wanted to get into crypto, but you're nervous about getting started, Binance is the perfect solution. Because Binance is offering new users outside of the US up to $600 in bonus rewards just for signing up and going to the task center. As you complete each task, you'll get some free money. For example, you get a $5 cash back if you make a first-time deposit of more than $100 within the first 5 days, and more, up to $600 just for trading on Binance. So to start taking advantage of the zero-fee Bitcoin trading, US residents can sign up at Binance.us, and new users from outside the US can get up to $600 in sign-up rewards if you use my link below. So pause the video right now and click on the link below. Thanks to Binance for sponsoring this video. Today, Johnson & Johnson is the world's most valuable and admired pharmaceutical company. It's worth nearly half a trillion dollars. That's more than the entire GDP of the United Arab Emirates. But beneath all that success and your oh-so-perfect reputation lies a dark history. Johnson & Johnson was started by a guy named Robert Wood Johnson and his two brothers all the way back in 1886. Robert had been working as a pharmaceutical apprentice when he got the idea to start selling ready-to-use surgical dressings, aka band-aids. The Johnson brothers' business took off and before long they were making and selling almost everything you could find in an 1800s first aid kit. But let's be honest, even though selling band-aids and bandages is good business, it's just not big enough. 
Obviously, the Johnson brothers had a talent for inventing and selling medical products, but what about expanding your market beyond pharmacies and doctors? What if you could appeal to a wider audience? What if you could sell to babies? Obviously not actual babies you'd be selling to their parents, but you get the idea. Think about it. Parents would do anything for their precious babies. If you could make a product and convince parents that their babies can't live without this product, you would be sitting on a gold mine. And that's where Johnson & Johnson baby powder came in. Your miracle invention. Most parents today will tell you diaper rash can be a real nightmare. It leaves kids screaming and crying all day, and the problem wasn't much different back in the 1800s when babies still had to wear rough diapers made of cloth. So you came up with a simple solution. A smooth, soft powder that would absorb moisture and stop diapers from scratching baby's skin. Simple, but effective. And it was a near instant hit. No one could believe such an annoying, worrying part of looking after a baby could be solved by a little white powder. And it wasn't long before even adults started using this new baby powder to keep themselves dry and comfy. But that wasn't all. Building off that success, instead of just sticking to baby powder, you created an entire line of baby products to make parents' lives easier. And soon, you were raking in millions, expanding into big-time pharmaceuticals, medicine manufacturing, and making a name for yourself all over America. All thanks to baby powder. Now if you're wondering why baby powder was so integral to your success, just take a look at Johnson & Johnson's marketing tactics. Like most major companies today, you realized early on that appealing to logic and reason makes good money, but appealing to emotions makes millions. Instead of targeting the world with success stories on how great your band-aids were or how many people love your baby powder, you switched it up and appealed to people's feelings. You used your baby powder brand to turn your image into a family-friendly company, the kind of company that has families and their best interests at heart. The kind that would give new parents that warm and fuzzy feeling, knowing they were using only the best products on their infants. Your line of baby products became your emotional selling point. The thing you could point to and say, look how much we care. And it worked. Whether you were selling Tylenol or cough syrup, your reputation as a family company made you America's first choice. People couldn't help but fall for the idea of a company that really cared about its customers. And that blind trust gave you all the leverage to take advantage of your loyal customers in almost any way you liked. That was until 2010 happened. Twenty ten was a really, really bad year for Johnson and Johnson. No, seriously, in the history of multinational corporations, I don't think anyone had a year that sucked quite as much. First, you had to recall forty types of kids' medicines for being contaminated or using the wrong ingredients. Then you had to recall nearly half a million boxes of contact lenses after customers experienced extreme pain while wearing them. Less than a week after that, you recalled all your supply of antacids because people had found pieces of wood and metal in the tablets. And to make matters worse, your line of hip replacements ended up shedding dangerous metal debris in the bodies of the people who used them. But none of this, nothing, could top the Risperdal marketing scandal. The cherry on the cake for a really, really terrible year. You see, Risperdal was one of your best-selling medications. It's an antipsychotic drug prescribed to treat people with schizophrenia. But like so many pharma companies before you, people with schizophrenia just didn't seem like a big enough market to target. But how do I make money off depressed people? Only around 2.8 million people in America have schizophrenia. But nearly 6 million people in America have dementia or Alzheimer's, two diseases you thought Risperdal could be pretty good for. If you could just get all the old people with dementia onto your drug, you'd triple your customer base. And since dementia patients don't exactly have the power to decide what medication they want to take, you had the perfect way in. Omnicare, the biggest company supplying medicine to nursing homes in the US. If you could get Omnicare pharmacists and doctors to swap out their patients' regular dementia medication for Risperdal, you would be golden. So even though the FDA had warned you that Risperdal could be deadly to elderly patients, you still offered Omnicare everything from sponsorship payments, grants, 
and even actual profit sharing in Risperdal to make your plan a reality. Basically, you bribed Omnicare to give their patients your drug instead of the medicine they were supposed to get. By the way, all of this is super illegal. In the five years that Omnicare marketed your drug, the revenue you made through them almost tripled from $100 million to over $280 million, just as you had planned. That's a lot of money. But even that wasn't enough. Why stop with old people? Risperdal was doing so well, why not start marketing it to parents with mentally ill kids, too? So you went to one of the best child psychiatrists you could find and offered him the deal of a lifetime. You would finance a research center specifically for him if he could find a way to prove that Risperdal could be used to treat bipolar disorder in kids. Around 3% of all kids and teens have some kind of bipolar disorder. If your new psychiatrist friend could make it seem like Risperdal worked for them, that would be another 2 million customers to exploit. And sure, Risperdal could cause humiliating side effects for teens, but who cared? You'd be making even more money. No one knows where you would have stopped with the bribes if you hadn't been caught. But in 2010, your little kickback program was blown wide open. Reports revealed that J&J &J had paid tens of millions of dollars to make Risperdal Omnicare's number one bestseller. People were appalled. But as always, the shock and horror only lasted a few days. And sure, you got fined a couple of times and even had to settle a couple of lawsuits. But unlike the Sackler family from Purdue Pharma, who were partly responsible for America's opioid crisis, there wasn't any naming or shaming. People just seemed to forget. And eventually, the articles and news stories went away too. J&J &J survived. In the three years between 1972 and 1975, Johnson & Johnson baby powder tested positive for asbestos three separate times. But instead of warning the FDA, changing your product recipe, or even just ordering more tests to figure out how bad the contamination was, you decided to do nothing. You see, back in the 1970s, you were at your peak. Johnson's baby powders made me feel soft, fresh, and loved. Everyone loved Johnson & Johnson. If you gave them bad news about one of your products now, your business would be doomed. So you did the only logical thing. You labeled the researchers who found the asbestos antagonistic personalities and told everyone they were leading an attack on talc, the core ingredient in your baby powder. You painted them to be the bad guys. There was no way you were gonna stop producing one of your best-selling products and admit you made a mistake now. Plus, how bad could a little asbestos really be? This is Darlene Coker. In the 1990s, she was diagnosed with a very rare type of cancer, the type of cancer most commonly diagnosed in minors who inhaled asbestos dust. But where had Darlene come into contact with asbestos? She never worked in any factories or mines, and she lived in a small town in eastern Texas. But here's the thing. Every day, Darlene Coker would use Johnson & Johnson baby powder. As a massage therapist, Johnson & Johnson baby powder helped her stay fresh and comfortable during her long workday, but according to Darlene, it also poisoned her. In pain and fighting for every breath she took, Darlene sued Johnson & Johnson in 1999. Unsurprisingly, J&J &J denied everything. Your baby powder was asbestos-free. There was no way you were responsible for her cancer. And when Darlene's lawyers asked to see proof, you used your money and power to block them from ever actually seeing the talc test results for your baby powder. It was one woman versus a massive multinational corporation. She had lost before the lawsuit even started. Darlene Coker died of cancer 10 years after her failed lawsuit. She was lucky. Most other people with her type of cancer don't even make it a year. But none of that mattered to you. It would take another 20 years after Darlene's lawsuit for hundreds of cancer patients to finally get the proof they needed to hold you accountable. The evidence shows you knew about the asbestos in your baby powder for 50 years and did nothing about it. And even then, the best you could offer was to stop selling your baby powder in America and Canada. But the rest of the world? That's still fair game. Out of sight, out of mind, right? And when other people with cancer tried to take you to court? well. You had one more trick up your sleeve. You used a law in Texas to create a new company 
dump all your baby powder lawsuits and asbestos liabilities into the new company and have it file for bankruptcy just a few weeks later, basically obliterating 38,000 people's chance to hold you accountable for your lies. Johnson & Johnson may have managed to escape getting labeled as an evil company, but not every profit-hungry multinational corporation can do the same, and no one knows that better than Monsanto, arguably one of America's most hated companies that's right up there with Purdue. Just like Johnson & Johnson, Monsanto started out all innocent and meant well, but it quickly turned into one of America's most dangerous companies. Today it pretty much owns the entire world's food supply but it had to do some pretty horrifying things to get to that point. How bad did it get on Monsanto's rise to the top? So bad that if we went into the details here, the video would get demonetized faster than you can say Agent Orange. But obviously, we're not gonna keep a juicy, eye-opening documentary like that away from you just because YouTube won't like it. So instead of posting it in public, we released it as a feature-length private documentary that's only available to members of this channel. This documentary goes into every last detail of Monsanto's bloodlust for money, and so far channel members have been loving it. And all you have to do to access the documentary right now, as well as all our other private videos on topics like MKUltra, the CIA's mind control program, CIA black sites, the real story behind Efri Jepstein, and a lot more, is to click that join button below. You'll be learning the kind of stuff they'll never teach you in university for just $5 a month and in a way that's way more entertaining than university lectures. Plus, there's a refund policy too, unlike most YouTube memberships. So if you join and don't think it's worth it, email us within your first month of joining and we will personally refund you for your first month. After your first month, there is no refund. So scroll down and hit that join button now. What's up guys, hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you're new here, my name is Jake and this is one of the biggest channels on YouTube for documentaries on money, power, war, and crime. So if you enjoyed this one, click the subscribe button below. You can always dislike, unsubscribe, and leave me your best hate comments whenever you want. If you want shorter versions of these videos, you can follow me on Facebook. But that's going to wrap it up. Stay dangerous out there and I will see you guys in the next one.